So let's review immunological memory. So uh, during an infection or exposure to a vaccine that prevent you from uh, contracting a disease, um, you're exposed to a pathogen, and this is hopefully going to elicit a primary immune response. And we're right now talking about the adaptive immune response. So you hope that naive B cells and naive T cells are activating. They're recognizing either the pathogen during the infection or the pathogen or parts of it in the uh, vaccine that you've been given. And these naive B cells and naive T cells are activating and they're proliferating and they're differentiating. And during the primary immune response, which takes about one to two weeks to fully activate, um, you're producing plasma cells and effector T cells. And the plasma cells are secreting antibody, the effector T cells, be them CD4 or CD8 cells, are doing their function to hopefully clear the infection um, before you die. Uh, so this is protective immunity. You're, ha you're unleashing the uh, effector cells, the effector B lymphocytes, the effector T lymphocytes, and they are uh, killing any virally infected cells. They are releasing antibodies to neutralize and opsonize the pathogen. And during this phase of one to three months, you have a really active response against the pathogen. Um, the other thing that's going on here is when you're producing plasma cells, they're actually different varieties of plasma cells. There are short-lived plasma cells um, and long-lived plasma cells. And this is only a recent, fairly recent discovery, uh, discovery in immunology that there are different types of plasma cells. So some seem to last anywhere from one to 12 months producing uh, antibodies, secreting antibodies, but these cells seem to die out over time, um, maybe last up to a year. So your level of antibody peaks right after infection, maybe two weeks after infection, and then starts to go down slowly over the course of a year because these short-lived plasma cells, uh, they do, will not live forever. They'll actually die off by via apoptosis. But there are some long-lived plasma cells which appear to live a person's entire life. So an infection when you were uh, 10 um, would yield these long-lived plasma cells that would be with you for the rest of your life, and they would be secreting a low level of antibody forever. They don't need to be re-exposed to pathogen. They're just constantly churning out low levels of antibodies. And these are great because they would neutralize any pathogen that returned. Um, to help prevent infection in the future. That's what gives you lifelong memory. So part of the um, immunological memory uh, involves these long-lived plasma cells. Of course, there are also memory cells, memory B cells and memory T cells that are produced uh, during B cell activation and T cell activation. So these are population of cells. For B cells, they've undergone isotope switching, infinity maturation. For memory T cells, they have activated and um, will wander your uh, inflamed tissues. And so these memory cells um, give an advantage to protect you from reinfection. Number one, they outnumber any naive cells that might recognize this pathogen, right? So when you act, when you have to find, dig through all your naive B cells and T cells to find something that has an antigen binding site that binds molecules from the pathogen, uh, you have to dig through a lot of B cells and T cells, whereas the memory B cells and the memory T cells, you have a much higher quantity of those that recognize the pathogen. So they outnumber any naive cells that might recognize the pathogen. They are much easier to activate. So there are molecular changes that occur on the surface of these cells, internally in these cells, that allow them to become activated um, without all the checks and balances maybe that naive cells need to go through. Um, and with memory B cells, um, unlike naive B cells, they've already undergone isotype switching, and if they've been uh, undergone somatic hypermutation and have been uh, undergone affinity maturation, so they have high affinity uh, immunoglobulin on their surface. So this is great. This gives you memory for fighting any reinfection of the pathogen. So one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years later, if you are re-exposed to the same pathogen, um, or if you're exposed to the pathogen that you have been vaccinated against, uh, what you're going to experience is a secondary immune response. And in this um, infection, uh, you will not have usually 
any symptoms of an infection. Why? Well, number one, these long-lived plasma cells are secreting low levels of antibody, so when the pathogen returns, uh, it might be neutralized almost immediately or optimized immediately so that the uh, pathogen doesn't have time to infect your cells or cause disease. Uh, secondly, uh, memory cells, memory B cells and T cells, will hopefully recognize the pathogen as well, and they will activate quickly within days, they will proliferate quickly within days, and they will unleash their attack um, very quickly. Uh, memory B cells uh, will re, um, repeat the process of somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation, uh, and so you'll actually end up producing even higher affinity antibody during any every subsequent infection. So immunological memory uh, gives you this protection so that um, usually, typically, during reinfection, during the secondary immune response, you do not suffer any of the symptoms that you suffered during the primary immune response.